This is Echo 3, and let's discuss the default computer controls for the game. I play on PC, so I'll be using the Alt key, but if you play on Mac, that would be the Option key, and if you use Linux, that would be the Right Shift. Right away, let's start by building a craft. I'm going to highlight the Back Quote key. That's the one with the tilde, or that squiggly little line above it, in the top left of your keyboard. That is for searching for parts, or you can just click up there for search parts. Let's place a pod down. Now, if I click on the pod, I can hold left shift to move the entire craft up and down. I can use the WASD QE keys to rotate the part 90 degrees. Hopefully, you have figured that out already if you've been playing for a while. Let's place a decoupler. And I'm going to highlight a few other things here at the bottom left. We have our snap symmetry mode here for angle snap, which is C, our placement mode F, our symmetry mode R, and our symmetry amount, that'll be X and shift X to move forward and backward through those. So I've just highlighted all of that there on the screen. We have a few other things down there for the center of mass and center of aerodynamic pressure. Now, if I hold down shift while I use the WASD keys, I can use the fine movement. And so I can move things in 15 degrees or five degrees, depending on whether I'm in fine placement mode or the regular mode. The number keys, one is for place mode, two is for offset mode, three will put me in the rotation mode, and four is for the reroute tool. That'll change the root part. So if I click on something, and what I did here by pressing on a different part, I changed the root part for the craft. That can be useful for certain features. Now let's place a tank. Now if I hold Alt, that will make it so that that part can only be attached to a node as opposed to a surface attachment. A useful feature when you're trying to line certain things up. Before we finish constructing this craft, there are a few other things I'd like to highlight. If I hold down the Alt key while I left click on a part, it will copy that part. It will also copy any child and grandchild parts attached to that part. So with my Secrets of Symmetry video, that is part of how I complete all of that. And if you hold down the Shift key while using the Offset tool, you can offset even further. So those are some handy extra tools to know when you are constructing your craft. Let's go ahead and finish constructing this craft, at which point we will go to the launch pad and I will highlight a few keys there as well. And a couple of those I don't think are very well covered in the tutorial and are definitely not listed in the default key bindings. So I'd like to make sure that everyone has a good idea of what's going on with those particular keys. I just make sure this craft can reach orbit on its own. It shouldn't be too complicated, just some fins. I have covered how to make a craft in some other tutorial. Here on the pad, let's start with some quick review of the function keys or the F keys that are on the top of the keyboard. F1 is for taking a screenshot. Very useful if you want to share stuff online. It is the default in-game screenshot. F2 is to remove the user interface. F3 is for bringing up the flight log. F4 is for ship labels. This is how you see the information about other craft when you are in orbit. F5 is for quick save, very useful feature. F6 is previous action set. F7 is next action set. F9 is the quick load button. Alt F9 will help you load a specific save and same with Alt F5 for saving as a specific name. F10 brings up the temperature gauges. F11 brings up the temperature overlay, and you'll see some odd colors on your craft when you do that. And then F12 will bring up the aerodynamic overlay, especially useful when you wanna see what's causing lift or drag in a particular craft. Alt F12 is for bringing up the debug menu. And some people would also call this the cheat menu because this is how you access the different cheats in the game. 
Probably the last couple things I'd like to highlight here are specifically with your staging and with your basic functionality for the craft. This is the cheat menu and how you access different things in it. Escape will bring up your pause menu, the arrow keys will rotate your view, the numpad plus and minus will affect your zoom, page up, page down are your scroll view, and home and end are for your stage icons up and down. T will turn on your stability assist, and R is for your reaction control system. U affects your light action group, G is for your landing gear action group, and backspace is your abort action group. Left shift and left control affect your throttle gently, while Z and X are for your full throttle and no throttle. Spacebar is to stage your different sections, and Alt-L will lock your staging, which means you cannot stage. Now let's cover our basic movement controls. W, A, S, D, Q, E are for our attitude controls. This is how we control pitch, yaw, and roll for the craft. Hopefully you are very familiar with this, and these are the basic controls for all crafts. And if you have reaction wheels, the reaction wheels will do the work for you. You can also use your aerodynamic control surfaces for airplanes. If your craft has RCS thrusters, you can press the R key to turn on those and then use the keys K, I, J, and L for your up, down, left, and right movements and H and N for forward and backwards. You can also press the delete key and that will put you in docking mode. Then your attitude control keys, WASD, will become your translation control keys. It is a good idea to set your docking port as your control point when you're trying to use the translation controls. You can see the thrusters firing as I press the different keys. These are the smaller thrusters. A trick can be to press the shift key to get fine movements, and then if your RCS thrusters aren't quite centered around the center of mass, the RCS thrusters will compensate. If I hold down the Alt key and use the right click, I can bring up multiple part menus at the same time. This is very useful if you're trying to transfer resources between parts. We're gonna have a Kerbal go on EVA. And right away, you can see that space is to let go of the ladder. B is to board the craft. F is for grabbing and using items. So right away, I'm gonna have him let go. Then we're going to turn on his jetpack by pressing R, like the RCS key, to go up and down. That is shift and control. And then we can use the WASDQE for different controls. I can bring up the construction menu by pressing I. And then using the same controls as in the assembly building, we can rotate our parts with the WASDQE and put our antenna in place. I can press the space bar and my curve will then line back up again with the camera. So if he is twisted and I press space bar, he will line up with how the camera is facing using his little monopropellant in himself. Now we're going to have him work his way close to the capsule and try to press F and see if we can get back in. Here we go. We've got and we press B to board the capsule. Now we are about done with this flight. so. Let's go ahead and get ready to bring our Kerbals home. One last thing I'd like to highlight while we have a Kerbal on EVA is that you can cycle between active vessels or Kerbals that are within physics range of each other, that's within 2.2 kilometers of each other, by pressing the bracket keys. This is also very useful if you're trying to dock and you want to cycle between your two ships so that they will line up and hold the same attitude that you want them to. A quick note on camera views, you can use the V and C keys to change your camera and your view, and you can switch between the different Kerbals inside a craft or change how your craft is being viewed. Quite useful. There are, on the bottom left of the screen, you can see how our craft is holding its roll, pitch, and yaw. By holding Alt and one of those keys, I can have the craft maintain a force in a particular direction. This is called trim and you can hit Alt X to cancel the trim. I use trim a lot when I'm using a single engine propeller plane and it helps the craft fly level without having to worry about the rotation from the rotor. Yeah, I also will use trim to help with the elevators so I can fly level that way as well. So that's a very quick note on trim. Now we can talk about time warp, which are your comma period for faster and slower and your slash for canceling time warp, but I can hold alt and period 
and comma for faster and slower physics time warp while I'm in space. This is very good if you have longer burns. By pressing tab, I can cycle between the different planetary bodies in the game. So here I'm focused on the Mon, I hit tab, I can focus on Minimus, tab again on Duna. This is really good if you want to focus on a future maneuver or something else going on in another system. But then I can press the back quote, the one with the tilde on it, to focus back on my active craft. If you look over at the staging controls, I can press the insert key to keep them highlighted or remove them from the screen. I can also press the home or end keys if I need to view a larger amount with my staging. Sometimes you have so many stages that you can't see all of them. So that's a useful way to see what's going on there. And if I press the delete button on the numpad, I can hide and show the nav ball. One final note about making maneuvers. If I left click on the orbital line, I can bring up my maneuver node. But then if I right click inside of that, I can bring up a second menu for canceling the maneuver or for setting on which orbit the maneuver will take place. There's a plus and minus orbit button in there. This can be very useful if you want to wait and set up a maneuver later. I press space and now we have staged and we are going to attempt to land our capsule. And when we come down, I'm going to show you one more thing. If I have my Kerbal go on EVA, I can press P to activate the parachute. Now as he's falling, I can use my WASD keys once the parachute is deployed to fly around and move him around. I can then press the O button and remove his helmet. Uh, not necessarily a very needed feature, but kind of fun that I can mess around with. Now we are on the ground and we move around with the WASD and spacebar is how we jump. And we can move around pretty easily. R obviously activates our jetpack. Now we're gonna recover our Kerbal. One little thing here, if you press Alt and spacebar and a direction key, you can jump from one ladder to a next. It's not a feature I've really used. You can turn on the lights by pressing the U button. Now we're gonna recover this guy and have one final note about rovers. Rovers are controlled by pressing the WASD keys. However, if you remember, that's also how our reaction control wheels work. So I'm gonna set the craft to only use the reaction control wheels when SAS is on, and so the craft won't want to roll and tip. Very useful, especially when you're on low gravity worlds. Now I'm gonna move the mouse over near where the Kerbals are, and you can see a little button appear, and that will let us see inside the cockpit. That's not a mod or anything, this is part of the stock game. I am Echo3, thanks for joining me on this discussion about the default in-game keys. I have recently hit 1,000 subscribers, Thank you all for being a part of this journey, and I will see you next time.